it was my day off work um, and I was just sitting doing a diamond painting. <laughs> doorbell went. Um, we had the ring doorbell. So I actually looked to see who it was. I saw um, somebody standing there with a bunch of flowers, which I thought was, you know, a lot strange. And I wasn't actually going to answer it. And I don't know why, I still don't know why I did. Um, she had sunglasses on, um, bright red hair and um, a COVID mask and this bunch of flowers. Um, and she just said, these are for you. And I sort of said, sorry. And she said, these are for you. And when she said it the second time, I noticed um, that there was a, a, a knife handle behind the flowers that she was holding. So I said, no, I don't want them, thank you, and tried to shut the door, and then she forced her way in. Um, I was um, shouting for help. And then my, um, my daughter, who was 14 at the time, she came running down the stairs, and she actually, she, actually, uh, she went for the, the woman that was attacking me. Um, the only other thing I remember is when she was behind me and she, she was trying to cut my throat and that was the point that I knew that if I didn't do anything and I wasn't going to survive so I grabbed the knife with my hands and I clung on to it and it stopped her and then I just remember being on the floor and somebody I don't know who he was. I think he was, um, I don't know if he was a neighbour or if he was just somebody that was passing by, but somebody just, she'd, she'd left. I don't remember her leaving, but she'd left and this guy just came, came and sort of said, are you okay? Do you need some help? And that's when everyone started sort of appearing to help. I remember being taken out of the house by the paramedics, but I felt like I was in this, this tunnel and I was actually seeing flashes of memories. And I thought that was it, I thought I was dying. The next thing I remember is waking up in ICU. You know, if someone I don't know can just come to your door and attack you like that, then anyone can. So I just didn't trust anybody that was anywhere near me. She'd perforated my bowel. So I had to have an emergency um, ileostomy and have a stoma put in, which I've still got now. I was there for a, a month before I discharged myself. Um, so I've got various scars from stab wounds and then the defence wounds. So I've got a large cut on, um, scar on my forearm and my hands. Um, all my fingertips, um, there's only two of my fingers that were untouched. Um, so yeah, I've got scarring and swelling and a lot of pain. Um, I also ended up with no feeling in my right leg. Um, because of my hands, I can't hold anything too heavy. So I can hold light things, um, but nothing too heavy. So I can't, I couldn't cook because I wouldn't be able to hold sort of a tray or a pan or I can't even lift the kettle to make a hot drink. I can't use crutches for long because of the pain in my hands. So I have that working against me as well. So it's, it's all limited because if it's not the leg, it's my hands and vice versa. I've lost all my independence. Um, obviously, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't go back to work. We're having to rely on um, disability benefits and universal credit. I've just, I've just lost my whole life really is I feel like I'm just a shell of what I was I, I was starting to sort of build my confidence in myself with with working and just being a mum and just everything and now I have to have help with everything I do I had to fight just to get some psychology help and I've only just started those sessions I still haven't processed what happened. I, um, I don't open the box because I'm already broken. It's, I don't sleep. 
when I do sleep, I get horrendous nightmares. Um, I have flashbacks during the day. It's, yeah, it's, it's not good. My daughter, I mean, I can't even imagine what went through her mind. And she still put herself in that position to try and help me when she saw what was going on. And she's my little hero, really. She'll always be my hero because I just think if she wasn't there, I don't honestly don't think I'd be here if she wasn't there that day. Until you've been in this position, you can't judge. And I don't want to hear what other people would do in my position, you know, whether they would have left or kicked their partner out or whatever. I, I get yes have that opinion that's what you would you think you would have done but i've done what's best for me i'm doing what's best for me and affairs happen it, it's a horrible thing and they they happen way too often but they happen but no one could think that this would be an outcome no one could see this coming you know you just you couldn't it's not a normal reaction to to somebody finishing a relationship with you this isn't you know what what she did is not a normal reaction um i also just wanted to i don't know if it's okay to but i wanted to take the opportunity to thank people that did come and help that day because i still you know i, I have friends that lived across the road who came to help but there was other people that didn't know me they'd never met me and they still they still came when they heard heard me shouting for help they all still came to help and i'm so thankful for that i want to be working again i want to be able to do things with my kids and the fear that i might not be able to do that without help from somebody you know always having somebody with me whether it's physically or mentally because mentally I can't go anywhere on my own it's yeah so it's it's the fear of not being able to rebuild my life I think